Welcome back. You're watching the final segment of the AI report for this week. Now, if you thought that data centers is the next new big investment, well, you're probably right. I mean, look at the kind of investments being made in India alone when it comes to data centers. Google is investing in a one gigawatt uh, uh, data center in Andhra Pradesh. And on the heels of that, we've also heard from Reliance Industries. But the big question around data centers, which offer these massive compute powers to users of artificial intelligence, is something which has been haunting the world. And that is the question of it being sustainable from an environment and a climate point of view. The amount of energy guzzling that happens at data centers is unimaginable. But it seems that one company in the US has potentially solved for that energy conundrum that data centers and data center investments find themselves in. We are talking about a company called Star Cloud. Amit Ranjan is joining me on the show again. Amit, uh, thank you for your time. Now, Star Cloud has done something fascinating, and that is what it calls orbital computing. As I understand, there are data centers being transported to outer space, and the company claims that the problems of energy consumption and carbon footprint are taken care of. Tell us what's happening here. I mean, when you tell people that within 10 years, it could be the case that most new data centers are being built in space, that sounds wacky to a lot of people. Yeah, so November 2nd this month was where this leap happened, where StarCloud One satellite, about the size of a small refrigerator, which hosts the first NVIDIA H100 GPU, was launched into space successfully. Okay. So. This provides 100 times more computing, computing power than any other space-based system. So what are we trying to say here? We are saying that there is going to be a full-fledged data center up in space. How does it solve for the climate problem? How does it solve for the energy problem? Where is it getting its power from? And what is cooling it down? Yeah, so the date has already been set. Something that is 100 times bigger than this experiment of uh, the StarCloud 1, which will be StarCloud 2, is scheduled for October 2026. Now, the only cost to this is basically, uh, like you said, it is transporting an entire data center up, on, up uh, onto space and using optical communication techniques, the communication will happen from Earth to space and back again of data. So there's a satellite communication. Satellite You're communication. Process all your AI requirements. Yeah. With a data center, which is not anywhere on Earth, on it Earth. is in outer space. Yeah. But why on Earth's name would you send a data center to space? Two reasons. The only cost, and the cost I'm saying even to the environment that is incurred, is the launch of the satellite that transports it from the Earth to space. And that satellite launch is actually in a vehicle which is owned, of course, by SpaceX. It's called the Falcon 9. So that, of course, is a cost. But I'm still not clear, how does it solve for the energy and the climate challenge? Okay, on the, in space, the energy that the a data center uses, uh, using resources from the Earth, it does not use in space. It uses solar power, which is abundant ah, in outer space. That explains it. Then there is the, no sunset. No sunset. And okay. solar power is abundant over there. There are no clouds, nothing. So these are data centers powered 100% by solar energy, solar energy in outer space, outer space where the sun doesn't set. It's getting 24, 24 hours and it's regenerating energy and power on its own. Okay. okay. Number two, the second biggest guzzler in a data center is the cooling. Water. Water. Mm -hmm. It does not require water. You are in vacuum. Which is, which is basically a, a, a cooling sink, okay. if, so to say. Right. So the big two of the carbon footprint that a data center gives onto Earth, they have been removed altogether. Fantastic. So that means 100% solar, self-cooling because it doesn't require water, it's in vacuum, heat does not spread. Mm -hmm. But the question is, what if something goes wrong, Amit? If, let's say... There was a problem, a simple networking problem, a simple communication problem, two servers not talking to each other. How do they get fixed? Because in data centers on Earth, you have manpower. What happens in space? You have artificial intelligence. Okay. So these things are being run, powered, everything by non-humans. Like in, the, in a satellite, when there is a big problem, there is another satellite 
uh, manned by humans which goes to fix that right i am guessing that when that thing happens it will be a similar thing that will be happening with these data centers so either which humans or for all you know the next falcon 9 or the falcon 10 could be carrying one of elon musk's army of robots which goes these are robotic arms and humanoid robots potentially the optimus that goes and fixes whatever fixes has gone wrong yeah oh fine so that is it's basically and uh, data centers like you said all big corporates are going into it so it's the next big industry every big corporate if it wants to keep abreast with the pace will have to have its own satellite orbiting around the earth with its own data center so therefore the term orbital computing in corporate uh, uh, universe okay so just help me understand overall is it going to be cheaper to have this compute power in outer space is it going to be more expensive or are costs really not going to be a bother because at the end of the day it seems like a practical thing to do so if you have to believe mr philip johnston it's a one time cost okay other cost is that you are if you are setting up a data center on earth you are in in any case incurring that cost right and, and you're paying, paying governments you're paying you're paying governments you're paying, you're paying, you're you're paying for you're power paying you're paying for, for, for cooling for land for land all of that is removed maybe the technology is slightly more expensive but if uh, the ceo mr philip johnston again i'm quoting him if it's uh, is to be believed your cost come down 10x all right and are we seeing companies sort of warm up to this idea have we seen any reactions coming in from the world that hey this is the next big thing orbital computing data centers in space is pretty much the next big thing that people want to bet on the experiment has uh, been successful it was powered by a nvidia gpu okay okay it went on a tesla uh, uh, falcon right so spacex the, falcon spacex falcon so there are three companies the big dudes who are already signed in onto this concept and they have already fixed the date for a next 100 times bigger gpu data center to be transported in october 2026 so the way is up all right so next year is when we actually see maybe some momentum on data centers in outer space becoming not just an experiment but a reality for offering that compute power to the whole universe thank you so much amit for your thoughts on that story and with that we've come to an end of this episode of the ai report thank you so much for tuning in but do remember news continues right here on news 9